Episode 71 of the Thunder Underground Podcast is here. My name is Trent, and I'm joined by Jason. How you doing? I'm doing good. Right on. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it? Yeah, we are. Well, I'm doing good because Chris Broderick is our guest. That's Yeah, that's uh, really a reason to be doing good. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a good one. It only took us 70, 70 episodes to get here. But we did. Yeah. We did, and it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah, we got one of the best guitarists in metal. Oh, uh, yeah. Coming up here in a bit. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, you know who that is. But if not, I'll let you know. He is the guitarist for Active Defiance. And he's also notably known for being the guitarist of Megadeth for quite a while. Before that, he was in Nevermore for quite a while. And he was also with Jag Panzer. So this guy has done his time in heavy metal. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think he knows what he's doing. Yeah. A little I bit. Think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we got a lot to talk about. We're just going to talk about the fact we went to the show and yes. we saw there was several opening bands, and it was really cool that, you know, the promoters, you know, did a good job of getting three area bands that were all heavy metal that yeah. all had a, a different vibe to them. Yeah, they had a different vibe, and, and they, they all had a, a good following, too. Yeah. You know, I noticed that for sure. And first up was even the dogs from Tulsa. Yes. And we actually decided to go to the show a while back because the band invited us yes, to come as their guest, which we thought was cool as hell. Very grateful for that. Yeah. So we decided to do this. And then obviously once we got there, we had the opportunity to talk to Chris. So it just made it that much more special. Oh, yeah. It was a great evening all around. Yeah. And we got there. We'll <laughs> back up a minute. Our buddy Kevin Graham, who you all know from listening to this podcast. That's right. You know, he came, he made the drive in from Arkansas and rode down there with us and went to the show with us. And we met some other people, you know, that we know from Rocklahoma and other stuff down there as well. So it was a good, fun time. Oh, yeah. You know, regardless of loving the bands or not, you know, it was it was a great time. Oh, way. yeah. Great time had by all. And, uh, you know, uh, I got to say, uh, go back and listen to our podcast with Eddie Green. Oh, yeah. Even the dogs. And go back and listen to when we had Kevin on. Yeah. You got to check those two out. Yeah, the Kevin was a Rock Loma preview, and there's lots of funny stuff from him on there. And the one with Eddie Green, you know, we just focused on basically even the dogs. Yeah. And there was a lot yeah. of other discussion about everything from glam bands to death metal, I think, if I remember right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and now, you've seen even the dogs before, right? Yeah. This was my first time to see them live. Okay. And uh, I was super impressed. I just thought they kicked ass. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know, people responded to him well. I really liked how, uh, you know, Eddie, he just made his vocals just seem just easy. He made it look easy with switching between clean and heavy. And uh, and he was just a real joy to watch uh, on the microphone. He knew what he was doing. And it just, it was seamless. Yeah, and he's... He's also a great front man, regardless. Yes. Yeah. Like he's one of those guys that's always communicating with the crowd between songs and getting people amped up. And, you know, there in the final couple songs, he had people making sure their hands always in the air and singing along to, you know, their, like the last song as well. He had everybody singing the chorus with him. And, yeah. You know, it's just, that's a sign of a good front man. Whenever you can get the, whenever you can tell the people to get involved and in, they do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like you said, though, you know, the band itself just, they pull it off. You know, they've, I love their stuff. You know, they had the, the EP a while back. They've got a couple singles they came out with in the past few months, Ghost and Optimist. And yeah, they've got a new album coming later this summer or early fall. That's right. And speaking of, he talks about a lot of that on the podcast. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they just, yeah, the whole band had a great, uh, intense vibe. They were all into it. And, uh, I mean, you know, other than other than Act of Defiance, I mean, this is definitely one thing I was looking forward to was these guys. Yeah. So if you're in the Tulsa area or anywhere around, you know, I mean, they get out and play other places, be sure and check these guys out or get online and look up even the dogs. They've got lyric videos for Ghost and Optimist. They've got live videos on YouTube as well. They're a great band. Definitely. Well, after that, Bag of Bones came up, and this was a band that neither one of us had heard before. No, uh uh-uh. I'd seen the name before, but didn't. that's pretty much the extent of what I knew about them, was their name, which is nothing, I guess. (laughs) And 
So anyway, it was cool to see these guys. I always love it whenever you never heard of a band and they step out and just instantly impress you. Oh, yeah. They had a real just straight-up metal sound, and the vocalist was in a, you know, totally classic 80s metal. Yes, yeah. You know, that early 80s. Classic voice. Yeah. You know, like if you just take a little Halford, <clears throat> Bruce Dickinson, even into Saxon, all that stuff, and just kind of meld it together, he was somewhere in between all that. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he nailed it. And he really had a presence of him where he reminded me of like a dude that would be, if you just walk, saw him walking down the street, I'm like, this dude's in a hardcore band or a <laughs> punk band, but yeah. then he gets on stage and he's like Joey Belladonna or something. Yeah, you yeah, know? So it was, it's like, it was great. It was really cool to, you know, he's got this look, but this sound and the, the whole band was just great, you know, and we talked to him a little bit after he said they're working on music right now that they should have soon, so... We're looking forward to hearing these uh, guys. Oh, yeah, and we'll play it, too. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. And they're from Oklahoma City, so if you see them around, get out there and check them out. I promise you will not be disappointed. And then, of course, speaking of Oklahoma City, we've got Archon. Ah, uh, yes. And this is a band we've seen before. It wasn't that long ago we saw them open for Kill em All in Tulsa. And same thing. You know, we didn't know much about them prior to that. But they totally blew us away there. And yeah. so I was really excited to see him again. And this was no different. They just, like Andy, the guitarist, is just going off. Oh, man. Yeah. He's just insane good. I remember just like looking at you and just like laughing, like, damn, this guy is just insane. <laughs> it was awesome. This guy's opening up for Chris Broderick and holding his own. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And they've just got this great straight up metal sound. They kind of get slayer, slayerish at times. Yeah. But, you know, never too much, and that's just, you know, great riffage and just straight-up metal vocals and in, in your face. You know, that's what we love, in yeah. your face style metal. Yeah, just stompy fucking stuff and just, um, you know, the, the in-your-face heavy vocals. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Well, speaking of, let's play it. That was the Archon from Archon, straight out of Oklahoma City. Like we said prior to that, just... Awesome riffage, awesome metal, that awesome scream that that takes that thing out, yeah. and just everything. I mean, these guys, you know, we talked to Andy quite a bit at both shows, and we'd talk to the other guys as well, and everybody's extremely cool, great dudes in metal. You know, yeah. you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, I love this song. I love the, you know, the... Uh... <clears throat> When it stops and he comes in, you know, with the Archon, it's just, it's ominous. It's just a great tune. Yeah, and it's another one of those that can get stuck in your head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and these guys are also opening up for Crowbar. Yes. So not only have we seen them twice, we're likely going to see them a third exactly. time because we don't want to miss Crowbar at Thunder Alley in yeah. Oklahoma City. How, how can you miss that? That's going to yeah. be nuts. A Saturday night in Thunder Alley. Yeah. And if you're from this area and you haven't been to Thunder Alley, get out there for any show. But yeah. especially Crowbar, you just can't imagine seeing the Riff Lord in a place that, that size. Know. You know, we saw Battlecross there, and Battlecross is in an intense live band, and it was just a great space for music. You know, just really, it's just one of those, you know, small dive places that's just, it sounds good, you know, so it... Yeah, and I mean, you know, you hear that, you hear that fucking phrase in your face, well, it's literally in your fucking face at this, at this venue. I mean, right. there's like a guitar neck in your face. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking badass. Yeah. And that's a... Uh, I hadn't mentioned that's a Tony Proctor TLP event. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I know he, I don't, I don't think he put on this Act of Defiance one, but he's put on several other shows like the Battlecross we mentioned. Yeah. Pretty much any, any of the shows you see in Oklahoma City that are at Thunder Alley or OKC City Limits and that kind of stuff, I know are him. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. He, he, he was, he was there. We said hi to him real quick. Yeah. And he's the guy that did, he ran the Chameleon Room and oh, Leon's yeah. Lounge. So any of those badass shows that came through. So, it's awesome to have someone in the area bringing in, you know, kick-ass bands that otherwise yeah. might not consider Oklahoma City. Bringing in good shit, yeah. 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 Like Soil Work, when they came a couple years ago and you didn't go. I know, I know. So to Tony, hey, next time Soil Work's in America, bring him back. <laughs> so that's I can of, see him. Well, just so I can see him too, <laughs> and then you can go, I guess. But Well, what do we got? We got... We're going to talk a little more about Act of Defiance, of course, from that show. But before we get into that, speaking of shows, we've got the Axeman Regionals. Yes. Which is going to actually be a two-part <clears throat> event. But the first 
the first night is going to be July 9th at the Shrine in Tulsa. And this is a Murdoch production put on by Steve Murdoch. And I know it's just a competition. I don't know a whole lot of details about how it's going to work out. But if you're a guitarist, you sign up for this thing. Bring your guitar. I think it said you could bring your guitar and up to two pedals. Okay. And you use their amps and their, obviously their sound system and everything. But you just, I guess you just get up there and show your skills either well or yeah, show what you're you made of. Play flamenco if you if you can. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> just get up there and do your thing. Besides the guitarist, there's also going to be several bands. Speaking of even the dogs, they're going to be out there, so you have another chance to see them. We've got Severmind, who, if you've listened to our podcast more than once, <laughs> you know that we're a fan of Severmind. <clears throat> yes, definitely. We've also got Gulch, Madewell, who we played a few couple months ago. Yeah, on the Lenny Lashley yeah. episode, yeah. Because that's a, more of a punk band, and they're, they're a great band out of Tulsa. And then we've got Crane Technique from Joplin, Missouri, who we, yes. played, we played just a couple weeks, or two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. And that's another great band great music check those guys out and obviously check them out if you get the chance to go up to the show and the, i think that this is the yeah this is the like kind of preliminaries and then the, i don't know if it's i forgot to write down the date but they're doing another show a couple weeks later okay for the finals on the you know the guitar contest yeah and the first prize is going to be a custom jägermeister guitar and a boss blues driver pedal and I guess that's being donated by the music store, and they're also giving away cash. Gotta so love cash. If you're a guitarist, you have nothing to lose here, that's basically. Right. You have that's everything right. to gain. So get your ass out there. Sign up. I don't get on their page, you know, their event page, and sign up for this thing. And if you're not a guitarist, just get out there and see Crane Technique and Severmind and even the dogs and all this other great stuff. I should sign up. You should. I can do a little weedle, weedle, weedly, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know what we should do? We should get Eric Reese to sign up. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm saying it on here, so... <laughs> Maybe it'll get out. Guilts him into it. <laughs> yeah. Well. I got something. Okay. I got something. I heard a song today, and I, I don't know if you... I'm sure you've heard it. I think it's the first time I've heard it. But I heard the, uh, is there anybody out there for Machine Head? Oh, yeah? And I'm pretty sure I hadn't heard it yet. And, uh, you know, it was on the Josta show, and they were talking about how... You know, it's helping them kind of get through on, like, Octane, you know, serious Octane. Okay. And I just would, what do you think of it? Because I can, I can hear that. It's a little different. Yeah. It's a little catchier. What do you think of it? I've always liked Machine Head enough that I don't care what he does outside yeah, the box. No. It's never bothered me. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I love the Burning Red when a lot of people hated it. Yeah. And then even Supercharger, was, was it Supercharger or... I'm getting confused when he had the cover of uh, Message in a Bottle. That was Burning Red. Or was Red. that on to Burning Red? Yeah, fucking, I okay. love that album. I don't give yeah. a shit. So it's just like, you know, I mean, even that Message in a Bottle, the way they played that was more along the lines of the way this song is. Yeah. So it's kind of, they've done it before, and I don't know, it's kind of weird because he's done a great job of uh, not reinventing himself, but bringing people back yeah. over the last five to ten yeah. years. Yeah. You know, when they came out with the blackening, and then everything since they got he got all the diehard metal fans back that kind of got pissed off at him yeah. for the you know the track suit and the <laughs> the cornrows corn you know? but you know he he brought everyone back without just rehashing old shit yeah and that's that really right there that's the key that's what you want to do when well, he and did he it in a, it. Yeah. a progression too just yeah. like a little just a slow back build up it wasn't yeah. just like hey look at me I'm metal again you know <laughs> he just slowly did it and people came back cuz i guess you could tell that it was genuine yeah you know? oh yeah yeah definitely and um i mean i like how it's just like the kick drum and his vocals and then it kicks into that catchy chorus uh i, I just thought i gotta i gotta talk to turn about this today you know? <laughs> hell yeah i'm 100 percent on board with all machine oh, yeah. at all times yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of great music what do we got we've got coming up in august this was recently announced not recently announced. This happens every year, the Ride for Dime event. Yeah. But the bands are recently announced. And it's on a Saturday in August, August 20th. And it's going to be Corrosion Conformity headlining. Well, that's insane right there. And that's. But wait, there's more. But that's something we've talked about yeah. for 
you know, for months or since last year, always kind of complaining that they've had these shows kind of within our region, but it never worked out because it'd be like on a weekday in Kansas City or something and, <laughs> or Dallas, yeah. and it just never worked out. And luckily, we finally got to see them when they came here opening for Lamb of God. But so for this to be on a Saturday, I'm 100% stoked. Yeah. And then, like you said, it only gets better. You know, whenever it's not just COC, but you have Prong I know. and King and Honky opening up. I know. how That's just insane. Yeah. I can't believe that. <laughs> I mean, I'd drive to Dallas for Prong. Yeah. You know, let alone them opening up for Crozier and Yeah, yeah, I know. So this is just something that, and it said it's part of the Ride for Dime event. So I guess the capper of that day. And obviously it said there's going to be a special guest so my guess is that's something probably Vinny. I don't know yeah. how that works. If hell yeah, is going to show up. Yep. Yeah. You know. Who knows? But you know what? Probably won't be Phil. <laughs> probably won't be. I'm just going to take a stab in the dark. And so guess. Super Joint won't be the special guest band. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking and, of great shows. Yeah. And the, yeah. Again, it's like this is kind of. You know, I see people joking about this on Facebook every day we have as well. It's like this year keeps kind of piling up. Yeah. Especially in July through October. And in October, they announced, Clutch announced their headline tour. And they've got King opening up and they've got Zach Sabbath. I know. Is that, what the fuck? That just kind of came out of left field. Yeah, because, like, there's no, you know, I've always seen Zach Wild or Zach Sabbath performing in L.A. or whatever. And it, I know he's done a few festivals here and there. But it never even crossed my mind to even mutter the words, I hope I can see that one day, because I never really thought that was an option. If it would you, happen, yeah. If you weren't out there, because it's just kind of like a side deal they did for fun. Yeah. And I'm like, he's never going to take that on the road. And then here we are. And look. He's opening for Clutch. Yeah. yeah. And see, you know, that was what kind of the thing was, oh, Clutch is coming to Oklahoma City. Well, we saw him. They'll come back to Tulsa. They always do. But then when you saw the opening bands, oh, shit, I got to go. Yeah. I will be there. There's no missing that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Clutch is a band that you don't even have to think about it. You know the show's going to be badass. Yeah. And the, But then when you put two bands like that opening up, it seals the deal on Yeah, it's nuts. You know, I don't care if I got to work at 5 the next morning. I'm going to get up and go. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and I think it's it shows uh, Zach's hard work. I mean, he could go on his headline thing. He could go on a experience Hendrix and just make bank, you know, and, and he's, you know, he's taking a, a support slot with Zach Sabbath. I mean, the guy does anything and, uh, you know, he's not stupid. That's true. He's, he never has to open for anyone if he doesn't want to, yeah, yeah. because like you said, black club society can play clubs or small theaters without a problem mm. and people are going to show up forever. Yeah. Even if, you know, even if it dwindled a little bit here or there every once in a while, it's still going to pull a big enough crowd that he can always headline. Yeah. So, yeah, to go out as a support act with this cover band just shows that this dude just loves to fucking play music. I know. I know. It's <laughs> badass. And you, you'll get to see Blasco, Blasco that used to be with Rob Zombie and then plays with Ozzy. So, there you go. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. And he's he's a badass, too. You need yeah, to listen to his... Uh, when he's been on the Josta podcast, those are like extremely interesting. Yeah. Because, you know, for those of you that don't know, he's a manager and manages a lot of bands that you know. Yeah. And so he's got tons of insight and just cool stories. Off the top of my head, he manages, I know he manages manages Blackville Brides. Yeah. And it's either like Butcher Babies or In This Moment. I can't remember which one. I one think, of those two. I think it's In This Moment. But and then uh, somebody else like quite a bit heavier. I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, this guy, yeah, like Trent said, go listen to his, his shows uh, or his episodes of Jamie Josta podcast. You'll learn quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. And I mean, you mentioned the, the Hendrix experience. That's the other thing I thought was really cool about Zach is like, I, I, I kind of get the feeling in the past year, you know, he still did Black Love Side, but I think he might have got to a point to where he wanted to do different shit because... Yeah. Yeah. He still did some Black Label shows last year, but he did. Obviously, he's done the Book of Shadows 2 album, and now he's doing that tour. He did the Experience Hendrix tour, which he always does. He did on Black and last year. 
Yeah. And then now he's doing Zack Sabbath on the road. Yeah, he did the the what the Ultimate Axe thing. Yeah. Yeah, he did oh, that. Oh yeah, that that whole thing. So he's done like five or six things outside of Black Love Society in like a year span. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he's 100% active and all of it. It's all across the board musical wise, wise everything from from Hendrix to Black Label, oh, you know, yeah. I'd say. So you got to love it. Yeah. Even if you're not a huge fan, it's like you got to respect that. And then, and then you've got King opening, yeah. Which I mean, I mean, I love that band. Yeah, that's a band that I hope will kind of continue their upward climb. You know, they've only had what two albums now. Two albums, yeah. And if if you like Clutch, if you like what, it, it's that kind of you know Clutch yeah. uh, down right uh, Coc type kind of stuff. If that if that's your thing, you're gonna love King. I mean, it's it's no it's no accident that they're opening for Clutch. I mean. It fits that whole thing. I mean, just to a T. Yeah, and I've only seen them the one time they played Rock Oklahoma yeah. last year, yeah. and they were great. Well, I hope they play far away, just like I said last time, which they didn't because <laughs> yeah. it was probably like a thirty-minute Rock Oklahoma set. Maybe I'll get lucky this time because I love that song. Well, guess what? You got two chances. Yeah, yeah, we do. This the ride for dime, and then the clutch show. We really do. Yeah, two chances in a month and a half. <laughs> So get your ass out to Dallas and Oklahoma City to see King. That's right. Or if you're listening to us from Spain, when they come there, you'll see them there too. <laughs> All right, Active Defiance. They have this album that came out last year. It's really good. If you love metal, I don't see why you wouldn't like this. It's got, we talked about this in the interview coming up. You mentioned it, that the vocals from Henry Derrick are oh, man. pretty broad. Yeah. So even if you're not into like, you know, the the real heavy stuff. He's also got a great clean voice, and it's just all kinds of greatness in this thing from him. And if you're not familiar with him, he's the former singer of Scar the Martyr, who was the the band that Joey Jordison started. And this band also features, obviously, Chris Broderick and Sean Drover, former members of Megadeth. And then we've got Matt, one of the two guitarists of Shadows Fall, playing bass. Yes. And so you kind of round that thing out and... Listen to this album, there's all kinds of, obviously, phenomenal guitar and drum work. And it's cool to hear, you know, Matt from Shadows Fall and this element, like, what's that song, Obey the Fallen, with that bass intro that's really cool as hell. And it's just, like I said, the awesome vocals. Can't say much more than that. I mean, if you like metal, like I said, I don't see why you wouldn't like this. Oh, yeah. I mean, the album's called The Birth and the Burial. Uh, and it's just, it's blazing. I mean, if you, this is, you know, if you're into the Slayer, Pantera, uh, you know, that kind of thing, I mean, this is, this is right up your fucking alley. And I mean, it need, it needs to, it needs to be out there more and people need to get turned on to this stuff more. And, uh, I mean, Chris Broderick just, I mean, just blazes all over this record. I mean, it's just insane the, the things this guy does on the, on the guitar. I think he's playing a fucking eight string guitar at the show. Yeah. I mean, and he just killed it. I mean, it was nuts. And, uh, it was just such an intense show. Um, you know, but at the same time, they had fun. They were smiling. Uh, uh, you know, Matt Bashan was jumping all over the place, jumping off the riser. I mean, it was awesome. So, I mean, uh, the vocals were flawless and, uh, it was just, um, I mean, it was a great show. It was just, you know, no frills, just, a, a an empty floor. They just come out in your face with the guitars and, and just the riffs. I mean, you can't, you can't ask for more if you, you love like the real heavy stuff. And, uh, I mean, I, I was, it, it, it was, it exceeded my expectations. I would go see this band again any day. Yeah. And, uh, the song Poison's Dream. Yeah. It's probably my favorite song on the album. Yeah. And then they played it live and we were standing right in front of him when he played that solo and that solo was unbelievable. Yeah. And then you just nailed it perfect live and yeah. it's just unbelievable yeah. to see. To see someone that talented, that close, you know, just like watching their hands, even if I don't play guitar, it's just mind blowing how he, how easy he makes it look. I know, I know, and you know, here's a funny, funny thing that I thought was, you know, it, that was just one of those like, you know, Saturday night feel good, you know, we need to go out with friends and let off some steam and bang our heads and scream and just, you know, be kind of primal and just get kind of crazy, right? Yeah. 
and I noticed there's these two kids that were standing next to, we were all in the barrier. And there's these two kids, probably, I don't know, 16, 17, next to Kevin. And they literally just looked like they got an F on their math test or something. <laughs> they looked so fucking sad, and they were just like, blank stare. And I'm like, Chris Broderick is right in front of you, like, doing this amazing fucking solo. I mean, ha- I mean, how does that not get into your soul and make you want to just scream or fucking, I mean, at least smile or, or something? I mean, and you're sitting, you're just standing here like, uh, I don't know, like you're just watching paint dry. Right. Stay fucking home if you're going to do that. <laughs> and, and I remember kind of nudging Kevin and going, what the fuck? These guys look like they just failed their fucking English test. What's their fucking problem? And he, he, he nudged them in the shoulder and tried to get them to move around. They wouldn't, they weren't having it. It's like, what, what, what'd you guys come here for? Go home. You know, if you're not going to come here, I mean, at least smile and, like, fucking get into it. I just, I, I don't know. I mean, uh... They'll probably bring me the Horizon fans or something. Right? Uh, I, I guess, I guess. I mean, I'm almost 40. I don't give a fuck. I was screaming my head off. Right. That's what it's about. Yeah. And, you know, these fucking bumps on the log, I don't know, man. <laughs> so, I don't know. I thought that was just funny, and I just, I, I, I just... I can't understand how you wouldn't go crazy at this kind of show. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's always great, in my opinion, to see a, a new band on their first tour because if you like that first album, you're going to get the majority of it. Yeah. And then, you know, years from now, you're never going to hear half these songs live again because that's right. they'll have a couple more albums out. And you'll remember yeah. that show you went to. Yeah. You know? And let me tell you something. Uh, at no time, you know, I knew who we were seeing. I know what bands these guys have been in. But at no time while we were watching them was I ever like, oh, fuck, those two guys from Megadeth. Oh, shit, that's the guy from Shadows Fall. Right. I mean, it was active defiance. You yeah. Know, fucking that says a 100%. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. It stands on, it stands on its own. Yeah. And, I mean, they've, they've got the songs <clears throat> to back it up. Like I said, Poison Dream and Obey the Fallen and Dead Stare is another great one. Yeah. And Throwback, you know, that was the last song they played and. Henry did a good job of getting the crowd involved, even you know the people that might might not have been familiar with them. You know, there's people there that were just there because of yeah. the fact that two guys used to be yeah. negative. But exactly, you know, he got the crowd into it, and everybody there loved it, and yep. which is great. And um, they did a pretty kick-ass cover of "I'm Broken." Oh yeah, 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 and that sounded great. Yeah, it did. And you can find video of that on YouTube. I know. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> well, we also. I walked up and talked to Matt for that's a right, couple, that's right, yeah. for just a minute or two at the merch booth because, you know, he handles their merch on the road, and I just asked him if there was any chance we're ever going to get a Shadows Fall record again, and he said there's always a chance. Yeah, you know, he wasn't obviously not going to say yes to that if it's not happening. He would not confirm nor right. deny. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he just said, you know, anything's possible, and it's there's a chance down the line, but. He did say that there will be live shows next year. That's awesome. And I just said outside of the Northeast, and he said, yep. So. There you go. Hopefully that means there will be a good chunk of Shadows Fall show. We'll at least get something here in the Midwest where we can, hey, Brian lives in St. Louis now, so maybe we'll at least get something to Missouri. That's right. And, that's right. You know, so he can play for his new friends out hey, there. Hey, I don't hey, know. Hey, why not? Right. So stay tuned. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're a Shadows Fall fan, there's something to look forward to there. <laughs> Well, like we said, Chris Broderick, you know, was cool enough to take a little bit of time out before the show to talk to us. And for about half of this, the sound check was going on outside, so just kind of bear with us through that. You can still, you know, it's it's kind of loud, but you can still hear his voice, so you can still hear what's going on. And the other good thing is that was even the dogs. Yeah. So it's good stuff regardless. <laughs> anyway, we've got this coming up now. we just get into it right now, right? Hit it. sure if we were going to be torched alive or you know or how people were going to perceive us but they really i think i think they got what we were trying to say so yeah, yeah i mean they got a lot of 
know, hardcore, but, you know, the metalheads, you know, love them too, so. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So. And this is the first, uh, I mean, I know you've done a lot of headline shows, but this is the first headline run, right? No. We did our first headlining run back in November of 2015. Okay. So is that like a, a conscious decision to go out and do that instead of opening for bands to start off with? Or? No, it was just, uh, just what lined up. Felt, all of that. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, uh, we're about a it? year. Has it been a year since that came out? Because it was last. Uh, right? Yeah, it was like so, a year from last November. Okay. Yeah. So. Are you guys have a timeline on the second album? Uh, well, basically, you know, when we get done with this tour, that's where our next focus is going to go. Okay. The creation of this next CD. So. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. Um, talk about like, um, you know, I know that you and Sean had your thing, and then you kind of got Henry and Matt. How did how did how did you find them? How'd that come about? Um. Well, with Henry, Henry's was more of a. Um, deliberate search you know so we had um, made a list of like 30 different singers and vocalists from those that were super well known to those that were like unknowns and we were just like you know we kind of went through and you know looked at the qualities of their singing of course and then also the logistics of you know what it might be like to have them in the band how many other bands might they be in and stuff like that and so by the end of that we narrowed it down to like five bands and uh i mean sorry five singers and from there uh we we sent each of them out a demo of uh legion of lies actually which um when uh henry's came back we we just knew he was the guy that we wanted you know his vocal style fit what we were looking for the most yeah now as far as matt goes uh he was you know it was kind of like okay we were looking for a vocalist and we just kept writing sean and myself and we're like let's just write okay we've got we've got all these things that we've got to do to get this band created um we weren't really too concerned with the bass at the moment because um you know we knew we would be able to, to find somebody for that spot and uh when it came down to it though it started to get a little bit rushed it was like well you know who are we gonna get and uh i didn't even know matt played bass in any capacity and then sean told sean was really one who brought matt in and was like yeah he filled in for hate breed on the bass and um you know matt's a great guy i'd met him many times before sean knew him really well He's a hard worker. He uh, sings well. He writes well. He plays guitar. He plays bass. It's like it's a no-brainer, right? So um, we added him just in time to get him to be able to record on the CD. Yeah. So he didn't have any writing input on the first CD. No, not on this one, unfortunately. I was kind of curious because I thought Dead Stare had a real Shadows Fall vibe to it, so I didn't know if that was yeah just by chance or I guess by chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, um, like. You know, on this, you're, you're just open wide up where you can do whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, like, in past bands, you had to learn stuff. I mean, uh, I mean, I bet that was that was probably so freeing and stuff. It had to be. Absolutely. You know, and that was that was the whole reason for the formation of this band. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, so that we could have our own say and be our own musicians and, and be our own people, you yeah. know. And, you know, uh, Obviously, we're coming out here, we're grinding it out, you know, we're building it again, and uh, that's fine, because it's all about the music, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, and that's, that's a great, that's a great, you know, view, is, you know, we'll grind it out if we have to, you know, just to, yeah. to do what you want to do. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, I mean, Sean and I could have, you know, stayed where we were at, but it's like, you know, if you're not really... If you're not on the stage playing your own music, then, you know, at some point, it's like, why are you here, you know? So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, there's always kind of like a stigma with super groups, mm -hmm. you know, when you pull guys from bands that have been successful. And, but you guys, you know, kind of have a sound that's not reminiscent of any of the previous members' bands. Right. Was, did you guys go into it thinking about that or just... Not really. Just coming no. out, however it came out? Yeah, it was, you know, it was really um, the main consideration that Sean and I had when we wrote the music was that we wanted it to be heavier. And that was it. Anything else was, was fair game. So, 
you know, any of my little classical interludes that, that I wanted to put in there, Sean was like, cool, whatever, you know, and, uh, any of Sean's guitar work that he wanted that, uh, that was slightly off center was fine. You know, it was like the only thing we would ever have is little, uh, suggestions for each other every once in a while. And that was it. Well, what do you think? Oh, sorry. I was just like, what do you think you guys got to do to get to a point where the media doesn't say Active Defiance featuring members of Megadeth to where it's just I think Active Defiance? Based yeah. on what I've seen with other members, past members, it's going to take a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, I was actually talking with Marty Friedman about that, and he's like, man, I've been working so hard to get away from that stigma. He's like, you know, and I finally feel like it's happening now, and I have to agree with him. It's been much much harder than I thought it would be to, to break away from that, that uh, labeling. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's just a time? I mean, a lot of I think it is a time, a people, time because, because people, uh, people still come up to me and they're like, hey, you're Chris Broderick of Megadeth, right? And I'm like, no, not anymore. I mean, people, you think when you release information on the internet that instantly everybody knows, right. but it's not, not the case. Well, you know, was Eddie Trunk said he met a guy that said, "Hey, what Slash doing nowadays?" So I mean, it's right. I mean, you never know. You think that people would know, but it's just it's insane. Right. <laughs> it's absolutely the case. So. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, what what would you? Well, first of all, I wanted to ask about um, your custom your pick holders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw that a while back, and I just thought. How did you come up? With, were you always dropping picks, or was it just? <laughs> no, it, it, that's just a it great has idea, so. absolutely nothing to do with that. Um, it has everything to do with my two-handed tapping stuff and wanting to freely be able to go in between picking and two-handed tapping. Also, the idea of doing finger style like classical, like my classical guitar background, and inter intermixing that freely with uh, with the uh, pick guitar as well. So. The problem with regular old thumb picks is that the the pick itself, the part that went into the string, never felt right to me. Usually they're way too long. Then the material is a cheap plastic, so it doesn't sound that good. The angle is wrong. So I was like, how could I use the pick I really like and and uh, still be able to do all those things? And so I was like, hey, if I made some sort of a little clip kind of holder that attached to my thumb, then that could happen. And uh, so I started experimenting with it, and I, uh, you know, eventually patented it, and yeah. now I produce them, so. Uh, that's, that's a great idea. Thanks. Uh, and as far as like, you know, I mean, I play guitar, so I gotta ask a couple of, uh, you know, as far as speed, what's a good, you know, for somebody who just doesn't have the speed, what's a good exercise to build all that up, you think? Well, I heard a good quote, and I don't even remember who initially said it, because I heard it from somebody who heard the quote, but it's a pretty good quote. And uh, the quote was simply that you'll never play, you'll never be able to play faster than you can tremolo pick. So I would recommend doing a lot of tremolo picking ideas. And it kind of, you know, in my mind, a really effective exercise is something that trains you exactly what you're trying to, to learn from the exercise. It's not just to conquer the exercise, it's to allow the exercise to show you how to play better, right? And uh, tremolo picking exercise will do that because it cuts away a lot of the, the other difficulties that you might have in your left hand if you have something that's too difficult to work on. So then you can just focus on your picking. Right. Yeah. Well, you mentioned classical a couple times. and have you, have you ever thought of doing a solo album? Oh yeah, yeah. Just classical or shredding or anything. Just, I've never thought about just classical, but um, I'm definitely gonna do a solo CD. So okay. yeah. Are you like instrumental? Are you gonna have? It's gonna be about fifty fifty, you know. Um, and I'm even messing around with singing on a few tracks myself. So okay. Yeah. Have you ever? You have never recorded vocals, have you? Other just background? backing. Okay. Yeah, just backing. But it might be time. Yeah. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe people are like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here you know but whatever you know it's again at this point music's uh music's uh you know fun for me to explore and you know if people dig it that's awesome do you have stuff like sitting around for years like as far as tracks for that oh like yeah album? yeah i've got actually quite a few um that that are in demo format okay. so yeah well
bringing Henry back in, back up. Mm-hmm. You've worked with, obviously, you know, legendary vocalists and metal like Dave Mustaine and Jack Panzer. Yeah, like Henry, I mean, uh, or Harry or Conklin. And, yeah. yeah. Like, what do you think, you know, Henry being relatively younger than these guys, like, what do you think he brings to this band and to the metal world? I think he, he just br- brings more uh, aggressiveness and, and uh, uniqueness, you know. I mean, each of those singers is a very different type of singer, right. and that's good. That's exactly, that's that's what sets them apart, you know, and so that's what we want with Henry as well. Cool. Well, you know, there's a lot of diversity he can do. I mean, I hear so many different voices on the record. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, you know, it's not like out of the realm, like, I mean... One of my favorite bands is King Diamond, and he's got you know more voices. It's like uh, he's got like twelve personalities yeah. or something. But yeah. uh, I love it to death. But I don't, you know, I don't think we could get away with with that those extremes right there. Yeah. But okay. I think for uh, the styles that we fit in, Henry, he's just he's on top of it. Right. So, cool. do you are you guys writing while you're on the road or anything? Um, or do you, is that not really the way you do things? Well, you know what? I actually just recorded a riff today, a really loose riff, but it was more, it's actually more for this uh, two handed invention that I want to write. But that's, that's totally, you know, aside from this, but that's the way it happens with me when I'm practicing. You know, I'll, I'll start working on something. I'm like, oh, I really like this. So the first thing I'll do is just record it and archive it and put it away until I have time to develop it. I don't necessarily like write when I'm on, like, so let's say I come up with a riff on the road, everything stops and I start focusing on that and I work on the next part and I, I create the next part or, and stuff like that. It's for me, it's like, oh, I have the initial idea. Now I'm going to put that away so I can develop it when I'm in more of a writing mode. So if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, I, you know, I don't want to go too far back, you know, into other stuff, but I mean, I got to ask, you know, do you have any kind of, big four stories or i know there's that that dinner at the first one yeah, I mean, yeah. that just had to be insane to be at it was it, w- it was uh surreal to to think <laughs> that uh you know uh metallica would just close out this restaurant and have all the band members just kind of go there just to powwow and that that's probably one of my fondest memories just because it set the tone for the whole series of shows was yeah. that you know it was a, almost about the brotherhood of thrash you know yeah. and uh so it was such an honor to be included in that it's awesome yeah cool. Cool. just you know this is probably a dumb question but say some band you know big band like megadeth not megadeth obviously but some other band comes along and says hey we want you is that something you consider are you fully into this now to where you want to do your own thing I mean, future. well, that's it's such an open ended question. Of yeah. course, I would always look at something like that. You know, anybody would have to be foolish if 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 Kirk broke his arm and and <laughs> right. he said, hey, can you fill in for me? Right. I'd be like, sure, I would love to, you know, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I could never give up my own personal creative freedom anymore. Right. Yeah. Wraps it up. Man. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we well, appreciate you. it. Yeah, sure. Thanks, guys. There you go, Chris Broderick from Active Defiance. Big time thanks to him for taking the time to do that. Yeah. We've said that's an honor many times, but this was truly an honor, no doubt. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was a crazy honor. And it was kind of like, uh, you know, it was cool going into it. Then when you're done, you're like, holy crap, we just hung out with Chris Broderick for like 20 minutes. That was badass. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but no, I mean, super nice guy, a great interview. So uh, just, you know, couldn't be m- more thankful. Yeah. And thank you to Liz from Ear Split PR for setting that up for us. She's been a help many times now with some other interviews as well. So yes. we're always thankful to Ear Split PR. And thanks to Sean Drover for setting that up when we got there. Yeah. You know, it was an honor to meet him right out the gate and, kind of unexpected so that was very cool as well yeah he kind of he kind of orchestrated it so uh yeah thanks to him for sure yeah well if this is your first time listening to us we appreciate it we're at thethunderunderground.com we're on facebook and instagram and youtube and twitter and periscope and we're also obviously on soundcloud.com backslash thunder dash underground we've got 70 other episodes you can check out we've had guys from if you're into 
Chris Broderick and his Megadeth stuff. We've had Sid Falk from Overkill. I assume you're a Thrash fan. You would probably dig that. Oh, yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, we've had on guys from Battlecross and Insight, Crowbar, like we mentioned earlier, Drowning Pool, Warrant, Sons of Texas, Europe. Uh, the list goes on. Oh, man. 70 other episodes, like I said. There's tons of interviews and there's tons of episodes where we just talk about music and random stuff as well yeah just start digging back you'll find some stuff you like yeah we've also got a great episode coming up with scott bond from death grip and he was joined by mike d petrillo of driver who's been on the episode on an episode before with us he came back kind of set in on the interview with scott and they both talked about what's going on with their bands and scott's past and everything and that's that's going to be a great one coming next week because yeah. scott had a ton of cool stuff to say that'll be a real good one and we've also got Sam McCaslin coming up here soon, and we've got two or three others lined up that I think people are really going to dig. Yes, they will. I'm not going to mention until they happen. <laughs> All right. Is that it? I think that, uh, I think that does it. All right. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Thunder Underground, y'all. Thunder Underground, y'all.